Hey, welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to bring you another episode of Trash Fisher Treasure. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, boys and girls, this is our victim for the day. It's a real nice uh, bonita, false albacore. He's part of the tuna family, um, but not as good. But, you know, they're pretty cool fish, and they're really, really good fighters. This one's really cold. So we're going to go. They're going to be, it's going to be pretty bloody. Can't do this outside today because it's raining. So um, we're just going to start out by, you know, just flaying them out, I hope. I never really cleaned one of these before, so I don't know how easy that's going to be. I'm going to cut them right behind the head. See what a, a regular tuna, I guess. I never cleaned one of those either. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and take a side off of them. I don't know how easy, again, that's going to be. Got kind of a notch right there you got to go around like some other fish do. I'm trying to stay down by the bone get as much of that meat as possible. We'll get him started and then uh, just take him right on off of there. Get down here by the tail. Just him off. Much like a tuna, he's got that very, very dark meat. Coming up here, you'll be able to see. Back get around and over. Start seeing him coming up there now. Um, color of it reminds me a lot of the Jack of Owl that we did on the first Trash Fish Treasure, which is uh, done real well on YouTube. Thanks for all of you guys that watched that. We're not going to be super picky about getting that side off of them. All right, well, I got both sides of him off now. I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, try to get the skin off of him. The knife really wants to ride up and, and on the skin of these fish that don't really have scales. And, you know, it might not have been such a great idea. I got about half of the skin left behind. Notice that, that uh, the grain of the fish really makes it want to ride right up. It's all right, we'll take that out later. And he's got a bunch of pin bones right down through here and a bunch of red meat I see. But uh, other than that, looks fine. I did bleed this when I took some of you guys' advice um, off YouTube from the uh, Jacker Val, and I did bleed this one right away. Uh, don't know if that's going to make any difference or not. I mean, uh, there's a good reason they're called these trash fish or shark bait, whatever. They make excellent shark bait. We'll go ahead and take the pin bones out, and uh, we can probably deal with this uh, this skin here. But let's go ahead and finish the other side. Okay, uh, much as with the jack of owl, we have that really dark, pronounced bloodline in this fillet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that off, so you can kind of hold your knife at an angle. Uh, this piece of meat is triangular, but we've uh, split it down the middle to make it much easier to get that dark red piece out and we will save that for our uh, chum we'll run that uh, through the grinder maybe and have some nice chum so what we're uh, ending up with there looks very very uh, much tuna-y to me I mean I'm not probably not going to want to make sushi with this guy but we can get uh, most of that real dark red that's going to have a lot of uh, strong flavor to that for sure. I'm holding my knife at an angle. I'm just going right along that part. Alright, so that's what we're left with after uh, cleaning them to back with gourmet style. And uh, now we'll figure out what we're going to do with them from there. Okay, after cleaning those all up, they don't look bad at all. Very uh, tuna like. Um, so we're going to do them two ways. I think uh, some of those we're going to we're going to try grilling some, 
and we're going to try to smoke some. So we're going to go ahead and put a brine on the ones we're going to smoke. All right, well, it's been about an hour and a half on these guys on the brine. You noticed as uh, usual, we've tilted the pan. That lets the moisture run down in uh, the other end. So what we're going to do now is just rinse those off, and then we'll get them ready just to oil and season and get ready for the smoker, which uh, I'll spin around here. We already got it. We're going to do these on the Weber kettle. And uh, reason being, it's just a small amount. If you're going to do a bigger amount, I would use the uh, Smoky Mountain. The cook time on these smoked ones is going to be fairly short. So today we're going to use the uh, Weber kettle hooked up indirect. I got uh, some existing coals in there with uh, just about maybe two dozen new ones. That I just lit and uh, put them on top there. So we're going to look at about 275. I want to try to hit that mark. Alright, these guys are all rinsed off. I patted them dry. First thing we do is just hit them with a little bit of olive oil uh, just to get um, you know our seasoning to stick to them real well and also keep them from uh, sticking to the grill. We're also going to we're also going to oil that grill very well. Next thing I got going on uh, good old Old Bay. Just a little bit of that. I like the taste of this on smoked fish. And then uh, over here we have some of our, our homemade uh, Backwoods Gourmet rub, barbecue rub, all purpose. A little of that. Flip motor to the other side and be ready for your smoker. Alright, well, this thing's up the temp a little too hot actually. Uh, it's up about 300. So we're gonna just grab our uh, our fillets here and kind of lay them at a 45 degree angle. Now I notice I have the grates running in this direction. They will transmit some of the heat toward these and hopefully put some nice uh, marks on them while they're cooking. But we've uh, got this about uh, two thirds of the way open and then uh, I might have to throttle this back even more, but just barely open at the bottom. I want to try to get 275 or as close as you can get. If uh, it's higher than that, no great loss, you just uh, take less cook time. Okay, the pieces that we're going to grill, all we did was put them into a uh, zip Ziploc bag with uh, some just generic Moho uh, marinade, right there, Moho marinade, uh, and put them in a the fridge. Let them hang out for a little while. Maybe an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, yeah, hour and 15 minutes in. All right, go ahead and take a look at them. They're looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go in to two hours. Okay, well, we decided to take uh, these two pieces here two nice uh, loin pieces and I'm going to do them uh, blackened in an iron skillet. So we got a uh, Don Prudhomme's, um, oop, that's been a lot of noise for sure, Don Paul Prudhomme's uh, blackened seafood magic here. So we're going to go ahead and give that a really nice liberal coat on all sides. It's kind of a rough give them some more all right so okay, blackened seafood is very popular so we'll see how the how the old bonita so those are all seasoned up and I already got an iron skillet going over here on camp stew you don't really want to do this inside if you can get away with it because it does uh, smoke up the house All right, over here we got our camp stove going um, pretty high, and we're just going to give our skillet just a little. This is a uh, grapeseed oil. And it's a high burning temperature. You use get grapeseed oil or uh, peanut oil. And now we're just going to wait for that to get uh, smoking hot before we put in our fish. Okay, once your pan is good and smoking, and uh. I'll take this from experience on this one. 
Uh, don't start this when it's smoking a little bit um, because it's not hot enough at that point and when you as soon as you put the fish in it takes all the heat right back out of there so let that thing smoke for a little while and if you're in doubt uh, let it get hotter because you know the trick to this whole process is to sear that fish and to seal the moisture so it's been about maybe three or four minutes since it started smoking now it's pretty much smoking from everywhere in the pan kind of like it does when I season these pans so, uh, I have used my best season pan uh, smooth bottom uh, one of the old ones one of the antique ones it works a lot better so here we go we'll give it a shot see if it's right it should go sizzle like crazy when we lay it in there Sounds pretty good. Doesn't smell awful. So, so if you're a little unlevel like I am right here, you want to kind of keep turning your pan. Just a tiny bit of oil on the bottom of that. Three-sided piece, so we're going to blacken it on all, all three sides. Um, but that's about perfect. That only took about one minute on that side. It was hot pan, but try not to flip it around too much. Leave it longer rather than shorter. But it, it uh, didn't stick at all. It's like a good old cast iron. And that looks pretty damn good. Black and Bonita, and uh, we'll give her a taste. Well, first, uh, let's go up in here and um, take a look at the texture of the fish. You know, it it turned very white, much like tuna when um, you know we cooked it. It's got a beautiful sear on the outside, and it's nice and flaky. So let's give it a taste test. Well, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm going back to the old camera, or a uh, new camera that I can flip the viewfinder with has uh, had an unfortunate event with salt water. Um, so let's give it a try. Very nice crust, crunchy on the outside. Very moist on the inside. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I mean, I just had some uh, seared ahi tuna at a restaurant um, a couple weeks ago. To me, that's just as good. Um, and all we put on this was some Don Paul Perdomes Black and Seafood Magic. But that is juicy uh, and as good as any, you know, restaurant tuna I've had. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are gonna say, hey, that thing ain't fit to eat. And I know everybody offshore catches them all the time. It's just a bycatch. Um, so that's the, the blackened, and I, I can eat all that right there. All right, just my. Mm. Pretty damn good. Hey, we'll spend two hours on our uh, smoke version, and they look pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, you give them the old poke test and they're, they're starting to flake. See how it's kind of opening up when you 
press it. Same with this one, starting to open up. Don't want to overdo them. So we're going to go ahead and take those guys off. And uh, we'll put them over here where our blackened one. I think this is going to be this, the star, maybe. I don't know. It's probably going to be pretty hard to, eat, to beat that blackened one. So we'll go ahead and set them aside, let them rest over there. We'll put some aluminum foil on them. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and let the grill get hot so we can do our third version, which is the Moho marinated ones. And uh, we're going to hot grill those. All right, we got the grill uh, roaring hot again. And uh, these are the, I've just rinsed these. I rinsed off the marinade and um, just gave them a little bit of olive oil. So we're going to go ahead and season uh, one side of them. This is just salt and pepper because we already had the moho on these for a while. So they don't need a lot of seasoning. I'll put them season side down right across that nice hot grill. And uh, we want to cook these pretty fast because they've been marinating. So we're going to go ahead and salt and pepper the other side of them. And we'll keep an eye on them. Really. Too early. Well, some people get uh, preoccupied with grill marks. You know, if I see a nice piece of fish and it's got beautiful grill marks on it, but it's dried out all the way, then it don't taste good. So whether or not you got good grill marks, go ahead and get it off there when it's done. If this is starting to flake apart, that means it's done, not dried out. All right, well, here's our uh, Benita three ways. Since this just came off the grill, we're gonna uh, give a taste here real quick and show you the texture of the, the grill. That is really nice, still just a little bit, the sticker piece anyway, still just a little tiny bit pink in the middle and that's the way most tuna should be. I'll give it a taste. That was really good. Really taste the moho on that. Um, again, that's that's restaurant quality food right there. Let's give a try to the smoked. You know, this guy smoked about two hours. You know, it's going to have a much drier texture. Um, so, I love smoked food. Again, really good. But to me, we didn't really need to smoke this guy. Um, all right, guys. Well, here's the breakdown. Um, this fish is awesome. I don't know how. I, again, like the Jacker Valve. I don't know how it got such a bad rap. This is better than Jacker Valve, and uh, you know everybody offshore always catches them. They call them a nuisance. Um, it said ain't fit to eat, you know, again, the old timers must have been pretty picky. But uh, the grilled and, you know, the grilled and the blackened, definitely my favorite. Smoke's really good also. Um, but most fish we smoke, we smoke them because they were strong, oily, or whatever, you know. Um, but I'd have probably been better off just, uh, you know, doing, doing them all, either grilled or blackened. Um, the, the blackened one, especially, you know, with that real fast hot sear on it, the grill would have been better if maybe if our fire was just a little bit hotter, uh, but it was still pretty damn gum good. So I don't know why everybody throws this thing away. So the answer to the question, trash fish or treasure, next time you go out there offshore, catch a big old Benita and your buddy wants to throw the thing back over or use it for shark bait. Tell them, heck no, I'm putting that in the cooler. I'm going to take it home and do it the Backwoods Gourmet style. So, as always, please subscribe, share, comment. And if you like what we're doing, hit that like button. Go see us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time.
this one because I actually have two fish on the same lure. <laughs> there they are. Two of them. Now that's aggressive. <laughs> two of two for one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're going to bring you another Trash Fisher tre Treasure episode cut. 